Hi, this is Erika Kassab from Small Robot Studio with a quick tutorial on Nomad Sculpt, a 3D sculpting app for iPad users. Today we are revising the scene menu. To open it, tap on this icon in the top left. You will find here the list of objects in your scene, options to modify them and create new ones. Let's scroll back up to the list of objects. You can select an object from this list or by tapping the actual shape in the scene. If you find it hard to identify which object is selected, I'll open the display menu on the top right. Then scroll down to outline selection. Activate it and a line will show up around the selected object. You can change the color and the thickness of this line. If you don't like this, another option is to scroll down a bit more in the same menu and then activate Darken on selected meshes. The color of your selected mesh will look lighter. Back on the scene menu, let's review what these icons do. This eye will hide or show an object. If your object is hidden, but you have selected it, we will see its shape shaded as a reference of where it is. If you don't want to see this, simply select another object. The cross with arrows will let me change the order of my objects by tapping and dragging. The pencil will let me rename the object. Every time you make a new object, take the time to rename it. It may sound tedious, but imagine if all these objects were named Sphere 1, Cube 5, Cylinder 3. Finding something will be a massive pain. The next icon, the bin, will delete an object. These two squares will create a duplicate of my object. The duplicate will be sent to the bottom of the objects in my scene. If I tap these three dots, I have a couple extra actions. If my object is made of more than one mesh, like these eyes, by tapping separate, they will become independent objects. Again, they will be sent to the bottom of the scene. If my mesh has a hole, which can happen by importing a mesh with missing faces from another program, I'll fix it by tapping on Close Holes. If I tap on Tri Planner, this will create three walls around my object. The shapes painted in the walls will modify the shape of the objects inside it, similar to the shadow box in ZBrush. If you're using this, once you're happy, make sure to tap on Validate. This operation will impose a new mesh in the object. With this slider, I can choose the resolution of this new mesh. If I want to work on a specific object and the rest are distracting me, I could hide them one by one. But there's a better way to do it. Instead, I'm gonna scroll down and activate Isolate Selection. The function of tapping an object in the screen to select it will still be active. It can be annoying unwillingly changing to another object. To avoid this problem, I will also activate Lock Active Mesh. This will bypass that operation, locking into what is selected, letting me work freely. Moving on to the next section, Multi Selection. When this option is not active, I can only select one object at a time. I'll activate it and select several objects. A faster way to do it without entering the menu is by activating the smooth shortcut and then tapping on more objects. You might have noticed that the available tools changed. The view tool does nothing except move the camera around. The gizmo will allow me to move, scale or rotate these objects in tandem. I am going to select all these fangs and simplify them into one object by tapping on Simple Merge. Nothing about the mesh changed. If I undo, you'll notice it's the exact same thing. These kind of changes will rename your object, so remember to keep track of that. On the other hand, if I select two objects and voxel merge them, the mesh that describes them will change. When using Voxel Remerger, before tapping on it, you can change the resolution by going to the Topology menu. Any shape that are touching each other will merge into one mesh. What if I wanted to subtract, like the hole that we can see in the mount? The original body of the fish looked like this. I'll create a sphere and position it where I want it to make a hole. Now I'm gonna hide it and with multi-selection select the body of the fish as well. Then I'll tap on Voxel Remesh. 
the hidden object and the area intersecting the visible object disappeared. This is known as a subtraction boolean operation. If you want to avoid jagged edges like you can see, you will need to remesh in a higher resolution. Alright, let's move on to primitives. Actually, there's a lot to say about them, so I'll tackle them in another video for this series. That's it for this tutorial. If you find it useful, make sure that you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we are bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking in the link below.